Hello, my fellow investors, and welcome back to another fundamental analysis video. I am so terribly sorry you're getting this video a little bit later than what you usually get from me at around 4 p.m. Eastern. It'll probably come out when, well, whenever I'm done with this. But yeah, I'm so terribly sorry. I was just focused on something else, mainly regarding the Rumble partnership, which, by the way, guys, we are probably going to be live by the time this video comes out. So if you would like to follow us there, if you'd like to see what we're talking about, make sure to follow us at Rumble. The link to that is in the description below. For today, though, let's take a look at the company Crocs. They do have earnings coming up, and y'all know I'm, I have a lot of stake when it comes to this company. A lot can happen tomorrow when they actually do have earnings. And yes, they do have earnings as of pre-market on Thursday. And again, guys, I really am banking on a lot of this because... I bought this thing at 116 and this has been crashing for a long time now, right? It's somewhat recovered now at approximately like 110 as of today, but it's still really low compared to what it was when I first bought it. So I'm going to take a look at this one before the earnings come out. And of course, we will cover this one on the earnings on the live stream on Thursday because it's, it's huge, right? So let's take a look at their fundamentals and see what my original thesis was when it came to Crocs. So with that said, make sure to like, subscribe, comment. It really does help her with the algorithm on YouTube as well as Rumble. And of course, follow us on X. So with that said, let's get started with this analysis. Now, while we do not have the earnings just yet, we do have the earnings estimate. And we can see here that the EPS normalized estimates, they're expecting $2.37, EPS gap of $2.18, and revenue of $958.46 million. 12 revisions, all of them to the upside. Very, very interesting because if we take a look at over here on the previous one, we can see that they had, actually, their earnings were a lot higher than expected and yet they still crushed it all except for the gap, right? So I, it may be a good chance that they actually may be on this one, especially since a few months ago, they came out saying that they're expecting really, really good sales for last quarter, i.e. Q4 of 2023. So let's jump that into the calculator. Again, We'll take a look at the earnings tomorrow when they actually come out. We got the ticker for CROX market cap of $6.56 billion, a PE of almost 10, current share price of $108.37. I know I said 110, my bad. It's $108.37. If we take a look at this thing on the one year, this is down 11.5%. And year to date, they're up, wow, okay, 16.02%. 52-week low of 74, 52-week high of $151.32. Yeah, uh, this has been going on for a ride, but as you guys can see right here, it's looking promising. We'll see what happens tomorrow. I do have a call for this. In fact, I'll show you guys the call as well as my current position on it, just so that way I give full transparency. Coming back to the calculator, they don't pay out the dividend, which means all of this free cash is going straight to themselves, and this free cash is going from the five-year average of $278 million to the last year's of almost $500 million. So, so let's take a look at now the fundamentals. We got the net income five years ago of 50.4 million to one year ago of 540.2 million dollars. Now this right here is as of 2022. So not even updated with the trailing 12 months of 2023. Nonetheless, though, this is an increase of 972%. You can see that massive spike from three to two years ago came back down, but all in all, it is heading in the right direction. I'm gonna give this guy a solid 75%. Looking at now the free cash flow. Now, aside from four years ago coming down a little bit, you can see that this is looking very similar to that of the net income. Five years ago of 102.2 million, to one year ago of $499 million, increase of 388%. We already saw the average of $278.14 million. I'm actually gonna give this guy a 75% once again. Now we do see a dip from five to four, but I actually have read a lot of their earnings and we have seen that when it comes to their CapEx, they're mainly doing that when it comes to uh, relocating their, I believe they were relocating their facility from California to I believe Ohio or something like that. So that was a thing that caused that. And well, I just don't really see this as a big deal seeing that it was four years ago. The revenue is looking absolutely incredible as you guys can see right here, pretty consistently increasing. Jumps from three to two and then from two to one. All in all though, five years ago of 1.1 billion to one year ago of 3.55 billion, increase of 227%. I'm gonna give this guys an I'm going to give this an 80% when it comes to the revenue. The assets minus the liabilities, all except for two years ago, is actually not looking too bad. You can see that, yeah, two years ago, definitely something happened. All in all, though, they're still in the positive. Average total assets being $2.5 billion, liabilities of $2 billion, and there's a difference of $491 million. I'm going to give this guy a 75%. The cash flow minus the liabilities, however, is 
coming down. There hasn't been one instance where they brought it up. You can see that as of one year ago, they're at negative 3.2 billion. The average being negative 1.1 billion. But again, this is mainly due to the fact that a lot of their liabilities is actually going back to growing their business. If you read their earnings report, they make it very clear. I, I like the way that they do their earnings report. It's actually very clear as to what they're doing when it comes to their liabilities. So all in all, I'm going to have to give this one, I'm going to say another 75%. Now, when it comes to the shares outstanding, nice consistent buyback, but you can see that from two to one year ago, they did increase it by around 5.83%. All in all though, on the five year, that is a buyback of almost 16%, going from 73.3 million to one year ago of 61.7 million. Guys, that is such a tiny amount of shares. This is why I actually really do like this company because they barely have any shares outstanding. And if we take a look at the discounted free cash in just one second, you're gonna see what this is going to cause. Now, why this occurred right here, I, I don't, I'm not fully, I don't quite remember as to why this happened. However, I do remember them saying that they are planning to buy back shares. So just keep that in mind. And with that, I'm not going to dig them too much on that. I'm going to say like a 90%. And lastly, cash and equivalents, they currently hold $127.3 million, an average of $150 million. So I'm going to give this an overall grade of 78%. Honestly, everything's explainable, especially after you read those earnings report. If you guys read it, they make it very, very clear and transparent that what they're doing with their free cash flow and their capital expenditures is actually good for themselves. So yeah, I don't necessarily blame them for having not too good of a free cash flow. All in all though, it's still a pretty good company from my assessment. Now, this is actually where I look at this and I'm like, this might be a pretty good price at around this point. And this is the reason why I bought at around $116. Look at this, not adjusting for debt across the board, $291.50 after debt, $258.53. So in the past five years, they've done around 15% a share buyback. I don't think they're going to do that much. Let's say something along the lines of like four, then let's go to six, and then let's go to eight. I think that that's very, very fair. Now, when it comes to the revenue, take a look at this. Seeking Alpha has the forward revenue of almost 21 and a half percent. That to me is insane. The sector median is almost five. So I'm going to take the middle approach when it comes to this in the form of saying five, then let's go to six and then let's go to 7%. So I'm really am lowballing it here. And well, this is why I'm actually very confident and hopeful at the same time too, but confident that Crocs should not be worth $108.37. Guys, not adjusting for debt, $362 to $404. Okay. Adjusting for debt, it does come down, but it's still $327 to $368. So I look at this and I'm just like, if this is truly worth 300 plus dollars, close to 400, like low, high 300s, low 400s. That is insane. Absolutely insane. I look at this and I'm just like, yeah, this is the reason why I bought at around $116.65. And of course, to show you guys a little bit of transparency, here you guys have it. So if I put in the ticker over here, you see that I do own 100 shares and my initial amount invested was $11,665.28, i.e. $116.65 per share. And well, I mean, this was a lot worse. Currently, I'm down $828.28. So because this company doesn't pay out the dividend, I actually sold a covered call today, actually, because IV is very high when it comes to options, especially the day before earnings actually comes out or just before earnings comes out. So I figured, you know what? Let me just sell a covered call on this thing. And I did. However, the covered call, if you guys take a look over here, I sold the covered call for a strike of 165 and I got a dollar and 15 cents, so $115 for it. Expiration for June 21st, 2024. Now, you're probably wondering, well, you just said it's worth like 300. The thing is, guys, right now, I kind of need the cash for my life. I, I really, really do. So I look at this, I'm like, well, $165, if it does end up going in the money and it does end up executing, that's still around $4,000 profit plus the principal is $15,000 right there. So I think I'll take it. I'll take the profit. And the reason why I'm specifically going this far out is because I bought my initial shares May of 2023. So at this level, I would get the long-term capital gains, meaning I would actually pay less taxes. So all in all, that pretty much does it when it comes to my thesis on Crocs. Again, we'll take a look at this more tomorrow when their earnings actually release on the live stream for Rumble. So of course, if you guys don't know, we did, we did get the partnership for Rumble and the requirements to keeping the partnership, it is live streaming, 
solely to Rumble, exclusively to Rumble, two hours a day, five days a week for 30 days. So we're going to be there. Again, the link to our Rumble channel is in the description below. We're going to cover a lot of good stuff, uncensored essentially. So yeah, if you guys would like to see that, make sure to follow us there. So with that said, be sure to like, subscribe, comment. It really does help here on YouTube as well as Rumble. Be sure to follow us on X. And with that said, peace out, and we'll see you all next time.